I've been with Bellingham Evening Toastmasters for five years. During that time, my fear of public speaking has gone down, but I still find speech evaluations always get me nervous. The most challenging role that there is. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. Tonight, I will talk about my approach to evaluation. I find it very difficult, but for some reason, I'm more likely to win best evaluator than best speaker or best table topics. Go figure. Maybe it's because I use the approach evaluate to motivate. I'll give you my own approach to evaluations, but first, I want to tell you about something that happened. 30 to 35 years ago, I studied martial arts. I had a bunch of teachers. One teacher stood out. I would go up to him, and I would show him a martial arts move, and he would watch me. <laughs> he never said, Bob, that's terrible, or Bob, wow, that's really great. He just always gave one suggestion for improvement. He might look at me and say, try squaring your shoulders and have them pointed forward. So I would try it again. Usually he would look at me and say, good. Now all the students knew that when he said good, he didn't mean that you had mastered the form. He meant that you understood his suggestion and that you were trying to apply it. Now, when I do an evaluation, I actually start before I even leave the house that day. First, I get together a list of what I call generic speech objectives, things like Vocal variety, speech organization, body language, eye contact, etc. I also look on the schedule to see who it is that I will probably be evaluating. I say probably because I was vice president in education and I know that sometimes we have to move around the schedule at the last minute. But I still like to get a good idea who it is that will be evaluating. Now also on the schedule, they have the speech title. I might also get the manual and the project that the speaker is working from. Might even get the introduction that the speaker wants the Toastmaster to read. All this is good information before you even start. And I'd like to get to the meeting 15 minutes early. Check with the Vice President of Education or the Toastmaster of the evening and make sure who it is that I will be evaluating. Once I know that, I will try to get in touch with the speaker I am evaluating that night. And this meeting, before the club meeting starts, is good, not just for the speaker and the evaluator. It works out that the speaker could give the evaluator specific objections that he or she are working on. Also, this is a good time to get the manual and find out the time window that the speaker is shooting for. So then I'm ready for the evaluation. I go back to my desk. I will read the manual. First, I will look at what the objectives are, and they're in a blue box on the first page of that project, at the back of the project. Specific questions that they want the evaluator to answer. Before the speech starts, the Toastmaster will ask me to read the objectives 
I start out by saying what the manual is, the project number. When I read the objectives, I save times by just reading the bulleted items. And then I will say what the time window is. That always helps the timer. So I'm all set. I have my list of generic speech characteristics. I go to the back of the project and I have the list of questions to answer right in front of me. The speaker starts speaking. All I have to do is listen and take notes. After the meeting, the Toastmaster will usually ask for 90 seconds to fill out the evaluation slips. I have never filled out an evaluation slip for anybody I'm evaluating. What's the point? They're going to hear my feedback loud and clear. It's redundant. Just a better use of the time. Start trying to organize what it is that you're going to say in the oral report. Look at your notes. Check off specific items that you want to mention. When I give my oral report, I will start out, let me just say that my oral report is a modification of what we call a sandwich method. I start out by giving things that the speaker did or said that I liked and I felt were effective. Then I give one or two suggestions for improvement. And at the end, I try to motivate the speaker. I try to tell the person what I saw in the speech that could bring out the great communicator that is within all of us. But starting out by giving positive points, I'm trying to build a foundation of the speaker's strengths upon which he or she can improve. And when it comes time to giving suggestions, I remember what my martial arts teacher used to do. I always give one or two suggestions for improvement. I know very often I will see a speech and I can think of a dozen ways the speaker could improve. Or I might listen to a speech and I have a hard time finding any, anything that I can suggest for improvement. Regardless, I always give one two suggestions for improvement. Now when I first started out and I would be assigned to do an evaluation for a senior seasoned speaker, I had the attitude, who am I to give that person suggestions? Who am I to give that person feedback? Well I found out something. In Toastmasters, anybody can give anybody feedback. Just two conditions. Number one, you understand that it is a person's opinion, both the evaluator, both the person giving the feedback and the person receiving the feedback understand that it's just one person's opinion and two, be given in a supportive, positive manner. Now, as far as giving an evaluation, I will give you my opinion. Very often, I will hear evaluations that end with the phrase, I'm looking forward to your next speech. So it's just my opinion that that is cliche, overused, <laughs> Not very effective. That's my opinion. I think we have to be more creative in our motivation. Leah, you always show us those beautiful pictures and relate to us great stories about all your trips. I am so hoping that you do the same with your upcoming trip. Or Deb, in the five years that I've been listening to you, you have just shown steady improvement in your speaking. 
It means you're working hard, and your hard work is paying off. I have a confession to make. Sometimes my motivational words have been chosen before I even listened to the speech. <laughs> And I think that's okay as long as I know that I have to be flexible. There might be something that I see in the speech and I have to change around what I'm going to say. Deb, tonight you showed us a new side that I've never seen before. You can be very persuasive. You made me think. Evaluate to motivate. I like that phrase. Tonight I have just talked about how you apply it in your speech evaluations. But I think it's more than that. It's a philosophy in and of itself. It goes straight to the heart of what Toastmasters is about. Evaluate the motivate. Good advice not just in your speech evaluation, not just in the other roles that you perform in Toastmasters, but in all the roles that you perform in life. Madam Toastmaster.